So, uh, today let me start with one topic, one is that national monetization pipeline, what a pipeline are either, okay, national monetization pipeline. So, uh, as you know very well, now it is a big, a big ticket project announced by the government, uh, where we are trying to uh, convert or rather monetize some of our assets. See, something like you know, uh, if you have a building, if you have a home, your house, uh, you can always tell that okay, this house is worth uh, 1 crore rupee, 2 crore rupee or 50 lakh, whatever it is, but it is only on paper, only for your satisfaction. Okay, har din subah sham upar niche dekhke you can say bade bada ghar hai mera isko kitna value pata hai tumko char logon ko bagal wale ko apna koi rishtedar agar koi garib hai to usko samjha sakta hai ki dekho i have so much of wealth this house is worth say 1 crore 2 crore whatever you want to say but you are not going to use that money unless otherwise you sell it and you cannot sell your house that easily so when we say I own this house and I have this house is worth this many rupees or this many dollars, it has no value unless we monetize it, unless we convert into a monetizable asset. Suppose I say this building where you are sitting, this classroom, okay, if you convert into square feet and say per square feet in Delhi, the rate is 15,000 rupees and uh, this, this is some so many uh, thousands of square feet area is there. So, if you multiply and say so many crores of rupees, unless I am able to sell this, it has no value. It's the same way, India has lot of assets, government has lot of assets. So, if you go to our uh, Connaught place, where our uh, New Delhi railway station is there, uh, that whole area is with the railways. Th hundreds of acres of land in the heart, that is the, the center most place of India. Hundreds of acres of land and that too many times it is occupied by some jugi because people uh, you know engrossed into the government land and then government is not able to make any money out of that but if you are trying to convert this asset into some money or by using that for some commercial purpose so that is the idea behind this monetization meaning we are not government is saying that i am not to, i am not going to sell this property it is in my name only, I will be the owner, but I would like to make some money out of it by converting that asset into some commercial activity with the help of the private players. So, that is the concept of this monetization, right. So, we are talking about the national monetization pipeline which the government is talking about. So, uh, this has been or this uh, there is a, a two volumes of that pipeline booklet you know volume 1 and 2 has been published also by the government. Uh, Crystal this organization is involved along with Niti Aayog. Prepared this document basically and uh, see the objective or the, the background is obviously our pandemic during the pandemic government uh, you know the government revenue has gone down dramatically. So, we are looking forward for some more government uh, money or rather some income for the government, so that it can be spent for various purposes that is a you know official purpose. So, the pandemic and the loss of revenue for the government is a one fundamental reason and then uh, when there is a downturn in the economy, when the economy is in the down I mean even though the government talks about a V shaped recovery and all. What do you mean by V-shaped recovery? The, the government, the, the economic growth has gone down. Then the government is saying that it is bouncing back with equal energy. That is why there the shape of the graph is looked like a V, even though uh, there is no clarity regarding this shape. It is a claim by the government that it is a V-shaped. Many people are saying that it may be a U-shaped recovery. Dhire grow karega, or it could be even a K-shaped recovery. What is that? Yeah, uneven recovery. Some people are gaining advantage of the whole situation and others are going down. Majority are going down, a couple of people, two Gujaratis are growing up, going up. Who are they? Adani and Ambani, of course. Another two Gujaratis are top of the power, so we cannot talk about them, right. But otherwise, generally, our economy is something, you know, it is a uh, forked recovery in the sense 
some people are some some businesses are able to take advantage of the situation like example you know mask making people any glove making i was told uh, uh, you know in in kerala the gloves the rubber gloves which we are making right now it is from the rubber latex the latex prices have gone up now because of the heavy demand for glove manufacturing i knew i knew a person uh, who who is having a factory for glove manufacturing and he was running in heavy loss till pandemic after pandemic he said bach gaya bhai corona aa gaya okay so because of corona he is able to make some business because his business is uh, this medical glove manufacturing so anyway so but that is why that is what is called you know k shaped recovery some are taking advantage some are some businesses are able to take advantage others are not some people are saying it could be w shape ek bar niche aaya then it went up slightly then again gone down after the second wave it may be growing up again so we don't know anyway so when the economy is in real trouble or the economy is not performing the way we were expecting earlier uh, government would like to or one of the ways in which we can uh, you know bounce back is government spending when the government spends especially in infrastructure it creates demand say in for example suppose a new uh, say this metro line which is under construction here so much of cement is used so much of uh, steel is used then lot of people are getting employment so that is how the demand recovery will happen uh, you know any time when there is a slump in economy the way it has happened right now one of the ways or the one of the sure shot ways of recovering is by government spending so that is why uh, you know this national monetization pipeline also would like to uh, collect some money and invest invest especially in, in there is also a program called national infrastructure pipeline okay national infrastructure pipeline now in this Uh, government is talking really big what is that this is what announced by prime minister modi uh, during the independence day speech or in 2019 itself in in that 19 speech in red fort uh, he said that uh, you know the government will invest 100 lakh crore aajkal koi limit hi nahi hai license hi nahi hai matlab kuch bhi bol dega okay 100 lakh crore rupees ye samajhne ke liye hame do din ka class aur lena padega what is this 100 lakh crore this the government will invest by 2025 in infrastructure okay so that amounts to in fact he was talking about 102 lakh crore rupees 100 nahi thoda aur zyada tha okay Uh, that is uh, 102 lakh and it is approximately if you convert into us dollars it comes to 1.4 trillion dollars what is 1 trillion huh what is 1 trillion 1000 billion okay 1000 billion dollars what is indian economy how much is indian economy kitna bada hai hamara hamara gdp how much is that rough idea come on what is that our prime minister is always telling indian economy will be made into 5 trillion dollar okay ye 5 trillion 5 trillion kham sab milke in 2025 we will become 5 trillion dollar economy we will become ओके, सो व्हाट इज नाउ उससे कम ही होगा ना इफ यू आर ट्राइंग टू बिकम टू फाइव ट्रिलियन डॉलर इकोनॉमी राइट नाउ वी आर अराउंड टू पॉइंट सिक्स ट्रिलियन डॉलर इकोनॉमी मीनिंग दैट इज द टोटल इफ यू से व्हाट इज द टोटल मनी ऑल ऑफ अस हैव दैट इज टू पॉइंट सिक्स ट्रिलियन डॉलर बट प्राइम मिनिस्टर इज सेंग वी विल इन्वेस्ट 1.4 trillion dollars in the next 5 years okay bahut bada acha hai if it is invested we should be happy because uh, some benefits will be there with all of us i mean if this happens 
सो देन इन टू इंडिपेंडेंस डे स्पीच उसके बाद कोई कुछ सुना नहीं हम लोग देन इन 2020 इंडिपेंडेंस डे स्पीच अगेन ही सेड मैं फिर 100 लाख करोड़ रुपी इन्वेस्ट करूंगा हम लोग बोला ठीक है लास्ट ईयर का 100 लाख करोड़ अभी रुको नया 100 लाख करोड़ सब लोग खुश हो गया ताली बजाया वो जो इंडिपेंडेंस स्पीच सुनने के लिए जो जाके बैठ गया सब कूद कूद कर ताली बजाया फिर कुछ नहीं सुना कोरोना आ गया 2021 नाउ प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेज आपकी बार 110 लाख करोड़ सो दिस इज वी आर वेरी हैप्पी टू हियर दिस नंबर्स यू नो सो पब्लिक अगेन ताली भक्त गणो एंड द ट्रोल आर्मी तुरंत बोला देखो देश तो नेहरू क्या किया कुछ नहीं किया देखो हमारे प्रधानमंत्री सो थर्ड टाइम प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेड इट विल बी 110 लाख करोड़ रुपीस व्हिच इज कॉल्ड द नेशनल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर पाइपलाइन ओके सो बेसिकली देयर विल बी डेडिकेटेड इन्वेस्टमेंट फॉर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर वी विल बी कॉन्सेंट्रेटिंग ऑन creating infrastructure where well, roads port railway airport i mean telecom anything you know anything related to that so now uh, you know in this for this so this national monetization pipeline is we'll be collecting some money by you know that leasing out our property right now and we are claiming or the government is claiming that we will getting around 5.96 lakh crore rupees ये तो हंड्रेड हंड्रेड एंड टू लैख है ध्यान रखना हंड्रेड एंड टू लैख इज द टोटल इन्वेस्टमेंट वी आर गोइंग टू डू बट इन दैट फाइव पॉइंट नाइन सिक्स लैख करोड़ विल बी कलेक्टेड थ्रू दिस नेशनल मोनिटाइजेशन पाइपलाइन ओके सो प्लीज डोंट कंफ्यूज बोथ आर पाइपलाइन दोनों पाइप के अंदर घुसेगा तो फिर कहा निकलेगा पता नहीं बट Uh, you know both are pipeline so don't confuse this is national monetization pipeline national infrastructure pipeline is different so when you see this pipelines again and again don't get confused both are different things here we are going to lease out our properties which are already existing so that government will government claims that we will get some money out of it and that money will be utilized for infrastructure development subsequently as part of the national Uh, infrastructure pipeline which the government is talking okay so uh, now in this and in the you know this was announced in august august 23rd by our finance minister and the team of uh, officers they talked about 23rd august 2021 this announcement came and as i said 5.96 lakh crore rupees is what is we are trying to generate out of the whole thing and in 2021 22 this year in the remaining time it is expected that 88000 crores rupees 88000 crores will be generated this year itself out of the 5.96 so on an average if you are to be generated in the next 4 years so the next couple of years it will be around 1.5 lakh crore rupees it has to be generated and this is different from our Uh, you know the disinvestment please don't confuse with this disinvestment okay there is another program going on it is you know retail sale wholesale sale ye to retail hai okay then this is what is disinvestment hmm? yeah it is selling of lock stock and barrel meaning everything we are not retaining anything suppose i have this building this investment means i sold off and whatever money i got evening party ke liye paisa nahi hai mere paas asset bejo masti karo okay that is disinvestment ye monetization bejunga nahi but aapko de dunga dono ek hi hai but officially there is lot of difference right so disinvestment is 100% so 
stake sell off. Whatever government is owning something, government is saying that I will sell it off completely. What is the target for this year in the budget? Any idea? This year, I think it is uh, last year it was 2 lakh 10,000 crore rupee worth our properties will be sold. Last year's target was there, but uh, unfortunately, because of Corona, nothing happened. This year, I think it was 1,75,000 crores. Yeah, uh, maybe the difference is last year it was 175 and this year is 210, I do not remember right now. Either way, these were the two targets for last couple of years. This year it may be uh, 210, yeah, last year it was 210, I do not remember right now. Please cross check that. So, this is where we are 100 percent selling off. For example, Air India, we want to sell off completely. BPCL. This Bharat Petroleum, it is a, it's not a loss making company, it is one of the most profit making companies in India. Last year I think profit was around 30,000 crore rupees. So, we are saying, no, no, it is not very much profit. It is not very much profit. It is not very much profit. Public sector company giving so much of profit, we will not be able to do it. So, we are on a spelling, uh, selling spree. Now, that is why many experts are asking, what will you sell after? say 10 years, bacha kya rahega? Rashtrapati Bhavan? <laughs> yeah, India Gate, okay. Red Fort ho sakta hai, okay, thik hai, do teen jaga hai abhi bhi. We will find another way. Red Fort may be monetized, okay. India Gate can be, wo bhi monetize hi karega. We will sell it to, or rather we will lease it to somebody and say, collect the revenue from there, maybe we will do that also. But this disinvestment is different, disinvestment it is 100 percent selling off. LIC, what is, what is happening? LIC, what are we doing? We are not disinvesting completely, that we are not giving up the stake or we are not giving up the com controlling stake, there we are you know we are bringing it to the stock market and the, we have already that initial public offer was given. So, I think 20, 25 percent of the share of uh, LIC has been offloaded, whatever money came it will go to the government, okay. Because government shares have been sold, but without handing over the management to a private player, it has not been done. It is still with the government, but we have sold some shares. In disinvestment, we are completely selling off, 100 percent stakes are given to the buyer, okay. So, there is, there is difference here also anyway. So, we are still in the process, but the last couple of years, in the disinvestment, whatever targets we are keeping, we are not able to meet because of the problems in the economy right now. There are no buyers for this. So, that is why some experts are asking if we are not able to sell off even a profit making company like BPCL right now, do you think we will be able to get the right price in the monetization? That is what some doubts are still there. So, in the process, why profit making government sector company should be sold? That is what even I am asking. I mean, somebody is asking me, maybe a sawal pooch rao. लेकिन मोदी जी मन की बात मैं ये नहीं बोलते हैं आपका सवाल सुनेगा भी नहीं ओके यू डू नॉट बी हर्ड सो वी डोंट नो राइट नाउ द आइडिया इज व्हाट इज द प्राइम मिनिस्टर्स फेमस स्टेटमेंट इन दिस गवर्नमेंट हैज नो बिजनेस इन बिजनेस ओके गवर्नमेंट शुड नॉट डू एनी बिजनेस गवर्नमेंट शुड डू ओनली सर्विस आई मीन दैट इज व्हाट द आइडिया सी इट्स वेरी इजी टू टेल all these things you know we can quote from some uh, foreign expert, some, some American expert because they already have lot of infrastructure, they already have all facilities. Then you can always say government has no business in business, but we have nothing. We are just struggling to even uh, take people to the uh, primary health center. Now during the corona time we have seen that you know uh, you primary health centers buildings are there. Usme gai you know, UP may many when they during that the second wave, UP Bihar everywhere. Yeah? I mean, it is not that I am just singling out UP, everywhere this is a scenario. So, when our infrastructure facility is too weak, it is too less, we need to do some business in all these things. We cannot hand over our primary health centers to private players, we cannot hand over our primary education to the private players because they will not do, uh, you know, they will do business, 
and in the process our poor will be suffering anyway so uh, this uh, what i am trying to say here is why government wants to make money see ultimately why are we selling the profit making public sector units we are selling only because government is desperately in need of some money government's income is not increasing so for the government's argument is by selling these properties the social sector expenditure can be increased okay so that is a feeble logic but that is how things are going on right now so uh, this is according to government this uh, monetization national monetization uh, pipeline nmp what we call is a uh, an innovative and alternative financing model innovative of course very innovative and alternative financing model yes abhi tak hum nahi suna tha okay aise bhi paisa banayega theek hai banao then it will unlock the value of investment made in public assets unlock the value of investments okay unlock the value of investments made in public sector or public assets so <clears throat> now government also said that this monetization will be done only in brown field assets what do you mean by brown field assets yeah green field asset ah completely new green field means you know in a kheth you know in a farm field where nothing is there if you are converting and if you are starting a new project there if a factory or a housing project or a you know anything for that matter then we generally call it green field because in a green field you are converting that green field into a you know a business or a, a an investment a project brownfield means already some investment has happened and already we have the infrastructure there now if that asset is convert that means already bana banaya cheese okay what we have already made we are already having it but unfortunately we are not able to uh, run it properly we are not able to make the right value out of it maybe because it is in the hands of the government now the government is saying that since i am not able to run this business properly i will lease it to the private players and they will make money and i will also get a share of it and i want that money in the beginning okay suppose uh, this this infrastructure suppose a hotel so if the if it is run properly if this hotel can make 20 crore rupee per annum profit next 20 years we calculate are tum to 400 crore banayega so i am willing to lease it to you how much money you will give right now you may make 400 crores in the next 20 years as profit if you go if you run it properly i can give it to you you tell me right now what will you give for the next 20 years okay that's a good idea na because whatever profit you think you will make in the next 20 years if i get in advance or other i will obviously i will not get 400 so a private player may come and say i can give you 100 crores right now so government will say yes wonderful idea de do you keep it so this is what exactly we are trying to do so in in roads where are the brown brown field assets means you know for example our national highway so around 26000 kilometers of national highway will be converted into the uh, will be part of this national monetization pro pipeline so this 26000 kilometers of national highway which has already been constructed private players are not going to construct anything there it's already there now what they have to do is that they will have to, we will be calculating some experts or other the government monetizing committee will be there they will sit and calculate what could be the toll which they may be collecting in the next 20 or 30 years from this 26000 kilometers of road okay so based on the economic growth also 
plus you know, the, the toll prices at that time after 20 years or 25 years or 30 years, whatever the years we are giving. So, there is that suppose in this 26,000 uh, you know, kilometers, say the, we, we may collect 1 lakh crore rupees of toll in the next so many years. Now, we are asking some private player buy, this is what you can make in the next 20 years. But it is a long process, but mere pas time nahi hai, sarkar ke pas time nahi hai, mujhe abhi paisa chahi, I need money right now, batao. So, somebody, Adani will come, nahi Adani ke beta aega nahi hai toh, I will give you 10,000 crore, how about that, right? government nahi nahi nahi, bodh kam ho gaya, thoda aur, so there will be bargain, there will be some sort of what you call, uh, you know, auction, let us hope there will be auction. Auction is a better way of doing things. Then, so naturally, see if somebody is going to make 1 lakh crore rupees in the next 30 years, obviously you will not get that 1 lakh, so is, is that some interest rate will be there, they will be calculating the interest and all for that. So, they will give some amount based on that calculation, right. So, that is the idea behind the whole thing. So, if that money comes right now, what the government, logic is very good. Logic is, if that money comes to me right now, which otherwise I would have been getting in the next 30 years, I can use that money for investment in another project and I can make some more money or like that, you know, my main activity will be, you know, you make something, lease it out, get the money immediately, again I will lease it out. So, if it works, it is very good, but it is not that easy to work. Idea is very good. When we are not able to sell out our property, like BPCL, when buyers are not there the way we were thinking. So, that means it may not be that easy to sell. I will come to that. What are the problems in this? I will come to So, brownfield projects will be done and not only this 26,000 kilometers of, uh, you know, uh, road, we will be also monetizing our rail line. We will be monetizing our gale gas pipelines. We will be monetizing our power grid, power transmission lines. Okay. Power transmission lines in the hands of the power grid. Then, uh, you know, railway stations. Railway stations will be monetized, meaning it will be given lease on lease for so many years. Road, I have already said, and then even stadium. Agar koi stadium hai, sports stadiums, we will monetize. Maybe we can give it to some schools and all. Rich schools can, uh, you know, maybe two hours every day of the stadium, they may be leased to them so that they can bring their children and play there. I mean, possibilities are there stadiums, swimming pools, even our uh, uh, community halls, government guest houses. So, some people in the government are sitting only to plan, kya kya aur bech sakta hai? Pahle wale shat udar do, ho bhi kar diya, pant udar ho, phir bula re angutha bhi hai, yeh dekha nahi tha. Okay, so abhi ek ek karke abhi, we, uh, some ex, some IAS is sitting only to find out kya kya bejenge. Okay, abhi bej bej ke log maja jayega, dekna. Okay, so we are trying to sell almost everything. Now, but the government say ye sale nahi hai. Finance minister in the press conference told at least ten times this is not sale, lekin sale hai. Okay, officially sale nahi hai kyo? Because it is only giving for, see, but if your house is rented out to somebody for 40 years, what will you call that? When you have no right over that property for the next 40 years, still will say, nee, nee, again, kagas mere, you know, the original property is in my name, but somebody else is using for the next 40 years. I don't know. I mean, of course, for satisfaction, we can always say it is not safe, but it is the worst form of privatization. That's what I feel because that fellow will have no sense of ownership. I was reading an article about this, an American, uh, you know, economist has said, have you ever heard of a fellow washing his rented car? 
who will wash his rented car? That is what the question he asked. Nobody will because meaning if it is your car, you will keep it properly neat and clean. If somebody else car, if you are taking it for rent, you may not be keeping, upkeep will be like that only. So after 40 years when you get back the property, what will be its shape? Who, who will keep that? Suppose this, if I am renting this property for the next 15 years to you or 20 years to you, you will only try to extract maximum mileage out of it because you know that it is not your property. And if there is some structural maintenance comes, you will not do the maintenance because it is a wastage of money for you. Especially in the last 4 or 5 years, you may not even do the maintenance. Anyway, so there are many such issues when you uh, sell or other when you, you know, go for this kind of monetization. So, uh, so the assets are going to be leased out, it is not going to be sold out. And all, only thing is the control is given, but we will take it back, that is what the government is saying. And Niti Aayog of course is doing, so all these uh, asset monetization and there will be an asset monetization dashboard will be created, asset monetization dashboard, meaning a uh, what you call a unified uh, you know, portal where the government officials can see which are the assets we have already monetized or not monetized, what is the process or what stage it has reached. So there will be a single dashboard where you will get a comprehensive picture, that is what they are saying. And also and we are planning for an uh, in IT, INVIT, okay. INVIT means uh, infrastructure investment trust will be created. Infrastructure Investment Trust, one by NHAI and another by uh, Power Grid Corporation. Basically, institutional investors like you know FIIs foreign institutional investors and all in the stock market see you know, some of the properties which we are planning is uh, uh, you know uh, the tourist sp spaces also okay so even already there was a plan for this red fort and all uh, you know it has been handed over to some private players so after some time what will happen when we say we go to red fort it will be written uh, like uh, uh, Reliance Red Fort, yeah, who are, whichever company okay, which purchases it or other upkeep of this, you know that is already been done, where the, the management of the tourist sports are or archaeological sites are given to private players. So what will happen, these fellows will keep their name also like our Delhi metro stations, many of them are named after the particular companies, right. So Gale. Uh, you know that uh, Bikajikama place uh, metro station like that uh, all these uh, uh, even uh, tourist spots are been monetized like this. So it is part of it but see everything depends on what is the terms and conditions which we are giving it to the private players okay. Anyway I am just coming to that. So this is where foreign institutional investors or institutional investors, in institutional investors uh, means the uh, stock market, the mutual fund, it will be like a mutual fund. This uh, in IT, the infrastructure investment trust is like a mutual fund where they will be generating funds which will be invested, okay. That is the idea behind the whole thing. So both the in, in, in domestic as well as institution, foreign institutional investors can invest in these projects. So. So on the, you know, the, the bright side of the whole story, the positives, what do we say? Number one, as I said already, this is unlocking the value of the public assets. We are unlocking, okay, so words both sundare, the value of public asset. Okay, value of public asset. Number two, it can, so if uh, you know if you are generating, if this has been leased out to the private players, it will definitely more economic activity, they will try to make some money out of it. So more employment logically speaking, more employment will be generated because private players are coming into 
and they will be definitely investing. <laughs> some people are saying, sir, you should definitely buy some of the government assets. <laughs> okay, then we may have our ALS classes in Red Fort. <laughs> Okay, so please wait. Okay. We will all try. Then the third point is uh, it will definitely it will help in the uh, budget, you know that when the revenue is generated, it we can create more assets or infrastructure by investing this money. Okay. By investing this money, there can be technology upgrade. So, faster economic growth, our dream of 5 trillion economy and all, if this money comes definitely, it will boost to our faster economic growth. Okay. And again, another advantage we are talking about is, especially if you are uh, trying a private player to you know, create something immediately, any, uh, you know, any infrastructure, there are a lot of bottlenecks uh, in land acquisition, then initial clearance. Okay. Suppose uh, if Delhi Metro, uh, initially, I mean, of course, these days it is slightly difficult. Earlier when E. Sridharan was the Delhi Metro chief. The advantage with him was that he had a very good equation with the Delhi chief minister at that time as well as the central ministers. So, whenever there is a problem, he used to or rather when a meeting is called, he used to insist that there has to be a solution in this meeting itself, then only the project can move forward. So, there is some clearance, suppose there is a, a Delhi art commission clearance is required, then the forest department clearance is required, an archaeological survey of India clearance is required. See, for example, our Delhi metro line was pa passing through that uh, Kutub Minar area and all, and it is a forest area, archaeological site area, and a lot of issues were involved. So, only because it was a government project, only because a person like him had good influence among all the government departments, we could manage to clear or complete the project on time. Had it been a private, uh, you know, you know, uh, project, it would have been stuck in various departmental you know the, the nuances and it might have gone to even court many times even uh, this time also one line in one line some 200 meters in the pink line there are some dispute and the project was stuck for three years the project was not completed recently it was completed in Delhi you might have heard about that why because there was some uh, lack of communication or lack of coordination between a couple of departments. So, if a private player tried to, if the private player is asked to create this infrastructure, they might have stuck for many more years. So, uh, the advantage here I am talking is, government is best suited to tackle the ground level challenges while building the infrastructure. Government is suited in tackling the ground level challenges in building infrastructure. Whereas, the private sector, we believe that they are better in, uh, you know, operate in a better or more efficient way. Private sector can operate in an efficient way. They are better in operations, that is the general belief. Okay, private sector are more efficient, they will be able to uh, bring in efficiency, accountability, etc. That is what we are believing, but again that is not a universal truth, is it not? So many private sector companies have failed, thousands of crores or rupees of the government or the banks have gone into that. Take the case of our Anil Ambani, a brother is doing well, but the other brother has, 
you know, thousands of crores of rupees is lost in his company, Anil Ambani's company, uh, Subrata Roy, our Sahara, it's a big failure. Thousands of crores of rupees have been lost in the whole thing. Uh, take the case of Videocon, our, uh, what is that, Dood, his name, I mean, hundreds of, I mean, I think around 5,000 crore rupee, uh, you know, uh, NPA is there with him right now. Our Kingfisher Airlines, Vijay Malyas, Kingfisher Airlines, 3,000 or 4,000 crore rupee loss. We can count at least 20 big companies which has failed miserably in India, private companies. So, every time when we say private sector can operate in an efficient way, in a good way, there is no, uh, universe, it's not a universal truth. Yes, there are many private players doing good business. But that does not mean that, uh, you know, they are, you know, all private players are in profit. But still, the general belief is private sector can operate in a, an efficient way. So, we will go by that argument. So, that is how the advantages are been talked about. Then coming to the disadvantages or rather the questions. And of course, the government repeatedly talked only about efficiency, efficiency, uh, you know, better value, all those things, yes, it's fine. It looks very beautiful if it is in, in a, you know if it is implemented in the right way. See, the idea many a times is not a big problem. Idea is not the issue. The problem is execution. In our country, finally, when it is executed, are we going to uh, able to get all these things? It's a big question mark. Okay. So the first thing is, <coughs> what is third point? Third point, kya bola tha main? Uh, create uh, more assets, okay, create more assets. I said using this money, we will create more assets, more infrastructure will be created. Anyway, so uh, the first and foremost thing is, will there be transparency in this monetization? See, private sector will take care of the assets. It's very easy to tell. Private sector will take care of asset to the extent that they will get profit. Okay. Private sector will not be worried about the longevity of that asset. If I get a particular project for 30 years, I will be worried about maintaining that only for the 30 years so that my return should come. Private sector is not worried about after 30 years what will happen. I will give back to the government, but in what shape and what form I will give it back to the government. Suppose I get this building, 30 years, 30 years I will take care so that I should get proper revenue, that much is fine. But after that, when I hand over, in what shape I will hand over? So when you, when you stay in a rented house, when you hand over the house back to the owner, what do you do? If possible, light, fan, huh? the switchboard bhi leke jata hai kuch log. Wale, ye bhi maine kiya tha. Wale, switchboard, hmm? kuch ne the tiles would have, koshish karega whether tiles will come out or not. If tiles will not come out, ko, koi baat nahi, bole ke aapka hai. Otherwise, so, if you are doing that in a small room, huh? cupboard ka, uh, taala laga, niga lega usme se. You know, the lock of the cupboard. Again, anything valuable, tube light, tube to jarur leke jayega. I am 100% sure. Do you think you will leave that tube light there? Even if you have no use for that. Even if you know that the new room has everything. Well, it's temporary, let me keep it. Okay. So, when you will not leave even a tube light in that room, when you leave that, you know, after the, you know, completing your term in the rented accommodation, do you think a private player will leave anything in that asset? This is the biggest challenge. You hand over red fort, kuch red color hoga, other fort nahi hoga. That will be the situation because everybody, you know, you, are, you, you don't have that ownership. The problem is you will not feel like owning that because you are on a leased property. Anyway, so will there be transparency in monetization? That is the first question. Number two, and Will it be in, uh, subject to political influence? Hmm? 
will it be subject to the lease will have legitimate clause i mean tum log jyada you know sarkar ki taraf se soch rahe lease will have legitimate clause okay wo aise kaise soch sakta hai aap okay now aap deshdrohi to nahi lag rahe aapko hmm dheere dheere aayega abhi okay so when i say there is a problem lag raha hai ki tu pakistani hai okay ye afghani ho aap actual pakistan bhi chhod de afghani hoga okay बहुत अफगानी चिकन खाया है इधर दिल्ली में इसलिए राइट ये अफगानिस्तान से आया होगा राइट सो पॉलिटिकल इन्फ्लुएंस एंड द बिगेस्ट वरी इज क्रॉनी कैपिटलिज्म ओके व्हाट इज क्रॉनी कैपिटलिज्म ए फ्यू इन्फ्लुएंशियल बिजनेस हाउसेस टेकिंग एडवांटेज of capitalism okay where a one or two players will take all the benefit and then that is the worst form of capitalism because capitalism we talk about in a market economy competition better you know better services see all these things can happen only if there are more players in the field and the best example is our telecom sector right now okay the way we had we tried to make money out of telecom the end result is we have only two companies left two and a half companies we can say jio maro or uh, sorry jio uh, airtel or ada ada is or what of on any time it will die it is in coma and bsnl tha hey we don't know okay so what is happening so why did we reach this stage in telecom now it is a duopoly monopoly nahi hai duopoly if the government wants it will become monopoly also because even airtel also can fail okay so what is happening we the, the everything is related to that 3g auction okay i'm not getting the full details 2g scam was there i'm not talking about that okay till that second generation uh, you know uh, telecom was there we have given this license on a first come first serve basis meaning government fixed a nominal fee any telecom play, anybody wants to enter into telecom field you can come and you pay a minimum fee and you get the license to run a telecom business or I mean uh, the mobile telecom service government did not look at any profit government said i don't want profit from this you start let there be more players coming into the market let them run and because of that competition we will get better service that was the idea behind the whole thing when the the 2g when during only when the second generation telecom was there okay when there was no uh, you know this uh, whatsapp and all in that 2g mein only sms we were able to say, i mean send at that time government did not want to make any money whoever came we gave license and we had 10 12 players in the market during the 2g time okay including the telenor tata docomo i hope you may have heard about those things right aircel hai na hutch hutch was of course purchased by vodafone so like the 10 12 players were there in india government did not want to make they did not monetize in the 2g we did not monetize our airways the uh, you know radio frequency that is what we are given the radio frequencies were given but no monetization then came 3g when the third generation where the when we have all this video mms everything we can do now in the 3g and 4g which we are using, using right now during this phase the government said that we will auction this three this license i mean we want to make money out of it okay and all private players participated in the auction and the government i think managed to get around 3 lakh crore rupees as license fee private players very actively participated the auction the auction was there they have you know participated and they they agreed to pay this kind of a money 
Now, after now the, the, the 2G scam subsequently emerged by when the government, when the CAG said that if you can get 3 lakh crore rupees by selling this much of the spectrum, spectrum in the radio waves, radio frequency, 2G you could have been doing much more or you could have been getting this, that and that is how the whole issue came. Anyway, I am not getting into that. Now, what has happened is when they agreed to pay this much of money as the usage fee or the uh, radio frequency fee, suddenly the cost of telecom service has gone up. And even now, if Vodafone is supposed to pay around uh, 1 lakh 40,000 crore or so to the government, right, including the fine, the, the uh, you know, all those interest and all put together, is mainly on this, uh, you know, uh, this uh, telecom, this license fee. Mainly they have to pay this license fee, they agreed to pay. And why this license fee? Because the government wanted to make money out of, they have actually, see this 3G, in the 3G government actually monetized that asset and private players were asked to pay. Private players agreed to pay also. But from where they will get the money, they will collect it from, they are supposed to collect it from the consumers. But unfortunately, then our, uh, you know, Geo came after that. Geo did not participate in this 3G purchase and all. So, they were not supposed to pay anything to the government. Now, they got an open field, other and they, you know, geo cut the prices, I mean the predatory pricing, what we call predatory pricing, meaning they slash the prices. That is why we are able to uh, get all these mobile connection as well as the internet at a very cheap rate right now. India has the cheapest mo mobile phone in the world right now, the services, even the internet connectivity, the cheapest in the world right now. Why? Because of this Geo's predatory pricing. So, when they reduce the price, Airtel was forced to reduce the price, Vodafone was re re forced to reduce and all other companies forced to reduce and finally they are not able to survive and one by one they died. Now, only three companies are left, Vodafone is about to die now. So, what I am trying to say is that when the government monetize, somebody has to pay. Suppose the government says, you know, for the electric poles, I am going to monetize the electric poles in the city. He is a private player. That is what happened in, in, in Australia. I think in Sydney city and in that uh, state, they monetized the electric transmission. And a private player took over. But in the five years, what happened is, the electricity prices got doubled. Why? Because they have to pay the, you know, the monetized amount to the government and that in turn they are collecting it from the consumers and ultimately somebody will pay. And so this telecom, if you are in this particular position right now, it is mainly because we monetized our, uh, you know, telecom or the radio frequency at that time. Government got the money or got government, uh, uh, you know, these private players agreed to pay the money. Now, if the consumers are not paying or if they are not able to charge from the consumer, these companies, they are going bankrupt and ultimately telecom sector is going to be in the hands of Geo and Airtel. Similarly, airport, most of the airports are in the hands of Adani right now. Seaport, again in the hands of Adani. Petroleum. Now, if the gale, you know, gale pipelines are going to be monetized, who will be able to purchase that or rather take it for lease? Only Reliance will be able to take it for lease because Reliance is a producer also and then they will have monopoly there. If we create such monopolies, then this is what exactly we are talking about in, in chronic capitalism or in the process we are going to create either monopoly duopoly or maybe even two, three players, maybe three, four players may be there, maybe we will create monopoly or duopoly or even triopoly, meaning three people may be there. See, in a proper competition, at least 10, 12 players should be there, then only there can be proper competition, then only there can be you know, value for money and concept will come. But unfortunately, this may be leading to a few players in India able to monopolize these businesses. 
okay, which can be really dangerous. And also, if private players are going to uh, monetize or other take over the government, uh, the, the public sector or other the, the assets, if the private players are taking over, then the private spending in the economy will go down because they are their money is diverted to government assets. Now, otherwise what will happen in any investment, there is a government asset, then the, the government investment, then there is private investment. If the private players are diverting their money into public asset, what will happen? The private investment will go down. So, ultimately uh, where we were supposed to get the uh, you know, investment in some other field, suppose I have money, I will invest somewhere. Now, I am getting an option of uh, you know, getting the asset of the government. So, I may be investing there. So, Otherwise, I would have been investing somewhere else. So, that investment I have stopped. I am not planning to invest it right now. Why? Because I am investing here. So, this will, when they take over the government assets, this will lead to reduction in private investment or private spending. Reduction in private spending. See, now, another point I would like to add here is, during the previous government's time or rather between uh, 2004 to 2009 we can say this is the time when Indian economy grew the best. The best performance in Indian history was during this time. It was a combination of external factors, some internal factors but mostly the global economy was doing very well, Indian economy also do very, it did very well. Otherwise, this was the time when Dr. Manmohan Singh, I do not think he has done anything to improve the economic position. In fact, the government was with the support of the left parties and the left parties never used to agree on anything. On any economic uh, you know, liberalization or any economic uh, uh, policy, they used to oppose. So, hardly any new policy came, but because of the external factors, because of the improved uh, uh, economic conditions in the, across the globe, our Indian economy also grew very well. And uh, you know, lot of surplus was created during that time. Lot of surplus, and uh, during that time, many private, public-private partnership projects came. Okay, but most of these public-private partnership projects, especially in infrastructure, they are in trouble right now. Okay. They are in trouble right now because the economy started slowing down subsequently. When the economy started slowing down, the expected revenue did not come and many of these projects became NPA, non-performing asset. Okay. Are you getting this what I am saying? During 2004-9, huge uh, uh, good economic growth, 8 to 10 percent economic growth was there. So, using that projection, many public-private partnership projects started in infrastructure, road projects, many things started at that time, thinking that, you know, they will be uh, raising this kind of revenue and ultimately, now they are in trouble because the economy started slowing down, now it is in negative growth. So, naturally, most of these projects are in some sort of a non-performing, many of them are in the non-performing asset category right now. So, these structural, these are because of many structural problems in the economy. many structural problems in the economy and moreover even before corona our economy was on a downswing or rather the economic growth was sliding just before corona the growth rate was only 4.2 percent in 2016-17 it was almost 7 percent that 7 percent has come down to 4.2 percent in 2020 economy was already in the downswing so what I am trying to say is that many structural problems in the economy these problems are not addressed they are not addressed even now. When you have not addressed the already existing problem in the public private partnership in infrastructure, now if you are trying to monetize it right now, it may not be solving the problem. That is what many experts are saying. Unless we 
uh, you know, uh, in solve these existing problems. If you are trying to monetize, it may be creating more trouble or private players may not uh, in be showing that kind of interest. So, uh, this because of the existing issues, private players may not show that interest. So, if they do not show that kind of interest, what will happen? We may not get the kind of value which we thought. So, we may not be able to realize the full value, may not be able to realize the full value. Okay. Then of course, as I was mentioning earlier, there is a fear. Now, the sixth point I would like to say is there is a fear that the private players will over exploit the private players will over exploit the assets because it is a limited lease period. Okay, it's a see. I have only thirty years, so I have to exploit maximum. I have to uh, extract maximum revenue out of it. Okay, because of the limited lease period. And if you are trying to monetize, a seventh point is uh, you know essential services. if you are monetizing our essential services like road and all, naturally the private player will charge more because they have already paid certain amount to the government, they want to make profit also. So, whatever the government got plus the private players profit, who will pay? The consumer will pay. So, the essential services will become costly because we have to whatever they paid to the government plus their profit we have to pay now. So, essential services will become uh, costly, consumers will pay more. And see, these are all structural issues, but the biggest challenge is as I told you, this may lead to some sort of monopoly or we are fearing what you call an oligarchy. Russia is the best example of oligarchy. You know Putin came to power in 1998-99. Okay. Now, wo jane ke nahi le re. recently he rewrote the constitution, public uh, permission also taken. Now, according to the latest thing, he can be earlier there was a condition that a, a person cannot be more than a president for more than two terms. Okay. So, uh, between 2000 to 2004 he was the first term then 2004 to 2008 he completed the second term. So, then he interpreted and said that Deko is my a person cannot be president for more than two consecutive terms. So, consecutive terms over. So, in 2008 election he did not contest the election as president, he did not contest, he asked his deputy to contest as the presidential election and uh, one Mr. Medvedev, his deputy was asked to contest and he became the president from 2008 till 2012 and Putin became the prime minister. Well, I am a prime minister, ban jata, tu president ban ja. okay. So, and all powers were transferred to prime minister then. Well, now prime minister will run the show. Hai, maja gaya. So, two consecutive term business is over. So, then he said, now I am eligible to contest, uh, now consecutive term is over. So, in 12 he again contested, he won the election 2016, 16 again he contested, he became 2020. Now, he rewrote the constitution. Now, he says, jo ho gaya, ho gaya, bhool jao. you please forget. Now, let us have a new constitution in which he is saying, uh, no president can have more than two terms, but from today, 
20 years, bhul jau. You please forget the last 20 years. Now, today onwards, nobody can have more than two terms. Now, I will contest for the first time. So, now he will be there till 2036. If everything goes well, if he is alive, he can be the president of Russia till 2036 by using what I think he has converted into six years, all this drama in between. Now, he says the new constitution says whatever happened till now is fine. He only made the constitution and said, now onwards, nobody can have more than two terms and his first term will start in the next election. Why? Because in Russia, a few rich fellows are running the whole country. Okay. When a uh, Soviet Union bre broke down in 1991, okay, new Russian constitution was created and uh, Boris Helsin, he was the president, the first president of Russia and uh, he went on a privatization spree. All, everything was public sector earlier, so now they privatized and uh, this privatization in the privatization, a few uh, rich fellows managed to corner all the businesses in Russia, all the infrastructure in Russia. Now it is under the hands of very few people and they are managing and manipulating everything. Putin is a product of that. Now just see, only one president, before Putin there is only one person, that is Boris Helsin. After his term is over, our man came. Now, in your lifetime, you will hear only his name. Russians are also, Russians are more worried than us, of course. So, this kind of a system. So, what is an oligarchy? Oligarchy means government by the few, especially despotic power, despots, okay, exercised by a small and privileged group of corrupt and selfish leaders that is oligarchy so if our assets are able to be cornered by a few we have enough names to tell i don't want to tell it right now the way things are going the fear of an oligarchy i mean a few of them will manipulate already elections are funded by rich see now our new the electoral bond rule which is there in our country anybody can contribute to anybody and your name will not come out. Are you getting this? Suppose I want to contribute, suppose I want to get some work done from the government right now. And if the government says, uh, you know, give me 100 crore as bribe, government will not say, some leader will say. How will I give this money? Very beautiful way of giving this money right now. All I have to do is that I have to purchase an electoral bond from a bank. Who purchases, nobody will come to know. As per law, it will not be disclosed. And I can give this bond to any political party. So, I can give this bond to say the ruling party right now, say BJP. I give it to this bond, bond to the government or the party, not the government, to the party. Party will get the money and they need not disclose who gave this money. My work is done. So, I am happy. Government is happy. No, not government, the party is happy. So, this is the electoral bond and the Supreme Court is not doing anything on this. This is a clear violation of all norms and Supreme Court is yet to take a final decision on these electoral bonds right now. If this is official corruption and then you see 90 percent of the money collected through the electoral bonds are with the ruling party and 10 percent with the opposition. Obviously, who will pay money to opposition? For what? For not doing your work, why should you pay money to the opposition? The ruling party will definitely get money like this. Electoral bond, I mean, with the electoral bond, we will come. Yeah, don't worry, yeah, polity, we will talk about that. Kuch log josh mein aage, Bilaspur mein, abhi batao, sir, electoral bond. Bataunga, mokka do. Okay. Polity pada ne do, then we will talk about electoral bond. Ye sab ho rahe hamare desh mein. Tum log to so rahe. Corona ke naam pe muh band karke baid gaya. <laughs> this is the problem in our country. So anyway, see, these are disasters. Okay. Anyway, so oligarchy, that's it. And then, so if at all, now forget about this, one more point I would like to add here is, any such, see we are talking about 6 lakh crores, rupees, a hell lot of money, a unimaginable amount of money right now, is it not? When, see the total government of India's budget is only around 33 lakh crores or something every year. 
उसमें वन फोर्थ मनी ऑफ द टोटल एक्सपेंडिचर ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट सो ह्यूज मनी सो देर हैज टू बी सम सी नाउ यू नो सम इंडिपेंडेंट अथॉरिटी there should be some independent authority where your grievances can be you know uh, filed there has to be some sort of a telecom regulatory authority like that you know this monetization regulatory authority should be there some independent authority in the lines of uh, say telecom uh, tri regulate, telecom regulatory authority of india or uh, you know electricity regulatory authority of india there has to, and this you know since so much of money is involved this authorities appointment and all should be very uh, you know there has to be uh, say for opposition also parliament should have a say it's not that you know prime minister will appoint somebody just like that and say that ye hamara you know monetization authority chairman hai pata chala ghar ka naukar tha aur uh, chai banate the abhi ban gaya ye okay so this kind of like election commissioner these days the government can appoint anybody as election commissioner so where is the independence of the election commission is a big question mark right now anyway so this independent authority should be there so that any complaint any question there has to be some authority which can cross check whether everything is fair or not another point we we need a policy a monetization policy should be spelt out should be declared by the government there has to be clear cut policy we should know how we are going to go about how we are going to value suppose i say the value of this nh is so many crores who decided how did we decide what is the policy behind that policy should be declared first then only monetization should start now the government has already kept 88000 crore rupee for this year's target now where is the policy no policy is there right now there has to be a clear cut policy so that we know that you know on what basis we are calculating the value of the asset see if the right value is not calculated it can be disastrous and uh, there has to be the most important thing is there should be true competition true competition in the field if you are allowing only a few companies to take over it is going to be disaster for the country true competition should be there and uh, capitalism I, i told already i am repeating this capitalism in its worst form is when it is when the business is captured by a few uh, business houses okay or if there are only one or two players or two or three players or even three or four players in the market that is the worst form of capitalism competition is a must true competition should be there then only we can get the right value also and then only there we can avoid all these nepotism uh, you know and uh, corruption in the whole thing which there is the problem right now is we have no clarity about all these things in the existing policy nothing has been said about how will they how will the government ensure true competition it is not been mentioned then another question many people have raised people said about creating jobs will there be reservation in that it hame to puchna padega na will there be reservation in jobs these jobs when you create sarkar ka property lease out kar rahe private players are coming into picture had it been run by the government there would have been reservation and everything will there be the social uh, you know reservation the, the 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 reservation policy will it be implemented it has not been discussed now also another big uh, you know challenge is what we call it as asset stripping by the private players <coughs> what is asset stripping hmm very simple yaar if i uh, you know give this building or this classroom for next 40 years so the player who purchase it he wants to make money his only aim is to make profit wo bolega ki ye kursi bahut maza aa raha hai iska cushion bhej dete hain pehle 
so they will say students may not require this kind of a cushion in the seat bolegi cushion ki koi zarurat nahi hai aaram se they can sit on the uh, you know on a wooden stuff and they can study pata chala do din mein sara cushion gayab asset stripping okay precisely this is what happens in asset stripping so when the private players come especially on a leased out property they will try to maximize the profit by selling off or other stripping away some of the assets so that they can make additional profit okay in fact uh, uh, engaged in corporate raiders that's what they say if a company is in stress suppose a company is in stress and it has two three businesses so they will come they will take over and they will try to sell off individually part by part and they will make more profit than the total value of the company may be and finally what is left in the company may be only a shell nothing will be there inside all the assets are sold one by one okay so this many 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 experts are saying that if you are handing over this property to 30 40 years since they are not owning the property they will try to strip away all the assets and ultimately when they give back what is left behind will be only the shell so asset stripping can be a problem and uh, then again finally a lot of legal battle will be there in this kind of a thing because why legal battle had it been an outright sale sale ke time mein some legal dispute may be there and uh, once it is settled that is gone now since it is for lease for the next 30 40 years <coughs> at every point of time somebody will come with something so the chance of a legal battle will continue for as long as this lease period is there so it can be embroiled in a series of legal disputes and things like that so uh, the bottom line i would like to say what is the final conclusion final conclusion is it may look like a good idea but everything depends on its implementation okay if you are ultimately ending up handing over to handing over the assets to a few uh, you know business houses you know very well the names then it is going to be disaster for the country if you are creating true competition through a proper policy and a, a proper uh, in our authority and independent authority to monitor all these things then it may add value to the system and for that to happen especially these are all very sensitive issues there has to be proper debate discussion parliamentary debates okay debate discussion we have to take opposition into confidence so when economic liberalization started in india in 1991 and uh, when dr manmohan singh suggested a, you know disinvestment okay i'm talking about 92 93 time and when he wanted to move ahead so we he approached the prime minister and said you know as far as the industrial policy is concerned we will be going ahead with some proposal for disinvestment so immediately you know you all recorded these days prime minister narasimha rao immediately called up the re- leader of opposition adil bihari vajpay and said that you know there is a proposal for disinvestment and this is how we are planning so what to do 
or rather what is your opinion do you have any suggestion so at that time it seems adil bihari vajpayee the leader of opposition said if dr manmohan singh is saying i have no objection if you are saying i have many objections okay so because he is a narasimha rao is a politician he is an economic expert so there used to be lot of discussion and debate and you know uh, you know opinion taken from the opposition is taken into confidence they were the discussion take place and they are asked to come up with their ideas if you know if there is a proper discussion in the parliament they will say you know, opposition ideas some of them may be taken if you know if it, if these projects or any proposal sent to the select committee of the parliament this says any any all these things require some law and when the law is proposed naturally it has it should go to the select committee of the parliament and all so unless there is a, a an issue unless there is a proper political consensus these kind of a good intentioned uh, you know idea also can be have can have disastrous outcome best example is a, a tata nano project in singur okay singur project was opposed by trinamool congress and it was initiated by the then left part, left front government in uh, you know in singur in, in west bengal and ultimately Uh, the whole thing uh, became a disaster and tata had to finally say sorry main aage kabhi life mein west bengal mein invest nahi karunga main ja raha hu bolke they went and invested in gujarat at that time anyway so it is a good idea good investment good proposal but because of the political uh, you know uncertainty or the political uh, disagreement between the opposition and the ruling party they could not so there has to be there has to be discussion and debate it cannot be you cannot be bulldozing the every idea and say that ye tumko nahi pata hai i know everything so there has to be then only these kind of ideas can be executed in a better way so somebody is asking what is legal battle legal battle is suppose you know, these are all service oriented suppose uh, tomorrow and uh, as a customer if you are not satisfied uh, with the the services given by the private player we may go to the court and in the court the private player will say mera problem nahi hai a government ka problem hai so they will come up with some logic and so ultimately this will become a fight between the private player and the government so that is what i am talking about even in the you know the telecom there is so much of legal battle and the legal battle it is all uh, you know ultimately it became a disaster the supreme court gave a verdict saying that you have to pay so much it's fully illogical you know what is the dispute between vodafone and all with the government see there was a, a, a adjusted gross revenue agr meaning in the a telecom uh, you know this uh, you know license when it is given when they said we will pay so many uh, crores or rupees as license fee they were not supposed to pay in one time instead they were told that you pay a percentage of their revenue as fee every year suppose uh, i am what a phone and if my revenue is 1000 crores i was asked to pay a percentage of my revenue as the license fee as a fee now the dispute arose regarding what should be treated as the revenue so it is said a percentage of the revenue now the telecom company said that percentage of revenue means whatever revenue i collected by doing telecom business telecom services okay that means uh, phone call uh, maybe internet connection whatever it is but the government said no 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 that is not some some government official only might have uh, you know uh, interpreted the whole law and they said that total revenue whatever you earned by vodafone its share should be there see suppose vodafone has many buildings one example i am giving and uh, some of those floors are not used by them they have rented it, rented it out well again since i have some excess space i am renting it out i am getting say 10 crores from this rented rent as rent i am getting now the government
even the money you got through rent that also should be added to a total revenue and its share should be given to the government so the telecom companies opposed they said this is nonsense when we say we will give a share it should be the share of the revenue we generated for telecom services this dispute went on for the uh, almost last 16 years various courts finally at the end of 16 years Supreme Court said that this is what is written in the law the interpretation by the government is final and you have to pay including the revenue you generated through other business and since uh, for the last 16 years the dispute was there these telecom companies were not paying that you know license to the government saying that it is under dispute now the supreme court said that since you did not pay at that time you pay its interest also it's fine also so what we started as maybe 50 60 crores per year with interest with fine this amount has come to almost 1 lakh crore or something like that these telecom companies would have easily paid that money at that time but since it was under dispute they did not pay now they got nahi nahi mujhe kuch nahi pata pura paisa do taki tum mar jaye jaldi okay so ultimate end result is this so this is how the legal battle will come and imagine if it is a road uh, you know service i mean the national highway dispute between between uh, you know the private player and the government 100 kilometers road because of dispute this private player stopped any maintenance of the road pata chala 100 kilometer mein gadda hi gadda you know only potholes in the road it could be the result then so that is why i said it can lead to many legal bad so some experts are saying that in you know, i i was reading in hindu newspaper there is a you know, debt monetization rather than asset monetization okay so some experts were saying we can debt monetization rather than asset money see what they are saying these experts are saying we are trying to generate say 6 lakh crores okay and for what for investing in some infrastructure so that our economy will revive so these experts are saying why should you sell your property or lease your property to get this you need this money that's all these experts are saying we will show you a way what is that their way they are saying these banks are having excess liquidity okay banks are flush with funds no takers for the loan right now because nobody wants to take a loan from the bank right now because businesses are not working economy is not in the good shape so there is a lot of money and what the government is borrowing right now okay the government borrowing the cost involved is only around 5.6 percent interest okay the government average interest paid by the government is only 5.6 percent right now as interest if the government is borrowing and the inflation right now is around 6.2 percent interest is 5.6 and inflation is 6.2 now you know the real interest rate okay real interest rate means that is actually nominal interest minus inflation okay interest minus inflation is the real real interest rate is nominal interest minus inflation okay really so that is real interest is minus 0.6 okay so what these experts are actually you are not paying any interest ulta it is profit for you even if you take a loan that is what this uh, you know real in in reality you are not paying any interest at all so you can take money from the bank 
take loan from the bank and invest in the infrastructure. So, this is what the experts are talking as debt monetization. You take debt and invest. Some experts are talking about this. Rather than selling off your property and leasing off your property, you need money for investment, I am giving you like this or there is an option like this. That is what some people are saying. See, of course, there are pros and cons there also, then the government debt will increase, all these issues. Anyway, so this is what some people were uh, suggesting. Okay. Anyway, so that is about debt. So, overall, I already said, we are talking about, uh, you know, huge money, there has to be transparency, there has to be accountability, otherwise this can lead to a serious economic crisis. But even then, we do not know whether there will be too many takers for all these things. When, when we are trying to disinvest, we are not getting enough players. Will we get enough players for uh, this leasing business? Time only will tell. Okay. So, that is the situation as far as this uh, is concerned. Mm -hmm.